everybody, Joan Zodians here, and welcome back to another episode of Spiritual Sundays. This week, we're going to be talking about the new moon in Pisces and a little bit more about Mercury retrograde. All right, so how's this Mercury retrograde treating you guys? Comment below and let me know. It's really not that bad, right? It actually, it's more of like an explosion of creativity, at least for me, and an explosion of intuition. One thing I didn't touch up on last week, too, was that um, because Pisces is known for their daydreaming, it also means that at nighttime, you're probably going to get more dreams and more prophetic dreams, too, right? Um, and or just more really confusing, vivid dreams. <laughs> I've been getting quite a few lately. So our intuition is on the rise right now, or is at an all time high, actually. And we might feel a little bit foggy or even just emotionally or energetically drained right now. So under this new moon in Pisces, right, we can find ourselves recharging, refilling our energy under this moon. And it's important to kind of know why we need to talk about new moons and full moons. I think a lot of people don't really understand that part. So I wanted to touch up on that as well, kind of educate you why astrologers follow moons. So the moon influences how we perceive and how we receive emotions. It's our emotional fulfillment bank, right? It's how we react to certain things in our lives emotionally. And the moon is one of the luminaries or one of the ruling planets, right, for cancer. So that's why cancers are known for their fluidity and their moodiness and their just emotions going up and down like a, you know, crazy roller coaster that they want to get off of, but they can't. <laughs> So this actually influences us a lot. Cancers in real life also influence us a lot because they know how to engage and how to manipulate energy or emotions, right? Emotional energy, that's what I mean. Manipulation doesn't always have to be a negative thing. It's just more of a deeper understanding of how emotions work with yourself and with other people. So it's being in control of emotions, right? And cancers oftentimes have, has, they have a hard time um, mastering their own emotions and mastering emotions of others. So that's their challenge. Now we borrow, the reason why I'm talking about this is because we borrow their energy um, during new moons and full moons. And new moons and full moons actually happen every month. So they go under different constellations, which provide extra energy. Okay. And right now it's under Pisces. So new moons equals new emotional energy. Got it? <laughs> and full moons are more of a release of this emotional energy. So under new moons, we build new intent. Under full moons, we release um, all of the energy that has been built up since the new moon. And then we uh, basically move on with our lives. <laughs> It's really just about building goals and building intent and just keeping yourself in check. That's like, that's how I like to look at it. You can look at it however you want to. Some people like to look at it as a very spiritual time where they can, you know, do spell work or they can do spiritual rituals or anything spiritual really. But, you know, it's really up to the individual. That's all I got to say about that. So moving on, what does the new moon in Pisces mean for you? Because it's working with this Mercury retrograde in Pisces, we have kind of a moment where the two fishes, so again, Pisces is a mutable water sign with two fishes, one swimming up, one swimming down, symbolizing light and dark energy. And we're in that moment today. So it's a good time to reflect on both sides of yourself, right? So when, ha, <laughs> Joan, learn how to talk. <laughs> when we are reflecting tonight or today, we have to think about both sides of the coin. Make sense? So because this is a creative and sensitive time for people, I feel like we all have to think about things that have a deeper meaning to us, right? So journaling is a good way of releasing or reflecting on the energy and building new intent is going to bring new emotional energy in, right? It's going to recharge you, especially if you've been having a very um, traumatic time lately. Let's put it like that. 
or just feeling very exhausted or very drained. I know I am. I've been putting out a lot of creative work lately, so I just need to take this moment to kind of relax. But I, trying to relax is very difficult. For, it's, a, it's, a, it's a struggle. <laughs> it's a big struggle. So I have to learn that today to kind of just build that intent moving forward for the rest of this Mercury retrograde and for the rest of this month where I sit down with myself and tell myself the things that I need to do to practice self-care, self-love, and to just take care of my energy. And that's what I'm recommending for you to do as well. Like, why are you doing the things that you're doing? What makes you motivated or feeling inspired to fulfill your calling, right? To fulfill your purpose. And if you still don't know your life's purpose, this is a good time to kind of figure out or to discover what's been preventing you from gaining that emotional fulfillment in your life. So when we create intent, and a lot of people get this confused as well because they don't know how to create intent. When you create intent, you have to think about all the positive things. I know it's cliche, but all the positive things and realistic things that you do want to achieve or that things or things that you feel like you deserve. And these are things that are more internal, right? These are things that help us emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. It's not a superficial thing like, oh, I need, I deserve a million dollars. You and me and everybody deserves that. <laughs> So try to go deeper with yourself, okay? Not in a way where it's like you you were like, I just want to be the most beautiful person in the world. Well, you can be a very beautiful person in the world. It all starts with your core energy, right? You can be a beautiful person. It's really up to your definition of what that means to you. But if you're trying to be something like um, an artist, a writer, a singer, something in creative work. You know, having this new moon in Pisces will really elevate that status for you or elevate that way of thinking and really bring forward that energy to push you forward, if that makes sense. And that's where we want to take advantage of the different energies under the different moons. So you have to keep that in mind for yourself as well, because not Every single moon is going to give you this type of creative emotional energy or this emotional recharge. So make use of it. This is a good time for people who are also social media influencers where they're trying to take a new creative direction. And if you are working in a career where you have to be very creative or you're a manager where you have to have creative solutions, this is a good night to kind of branch out and to get out of your comfort zone and to go with what you feel um, is more meaningful and that will bring more emotional fulfillment, not just to yourself, but to others as well. All right. So keep that in mind. All right. So with that being said, I think I'm going to end the podcast right here. Um, and I'm going to go, you know, follow my own advice and kind of reflect on all the creative work and the creative direction that I want to go forward with in my life. Um, I keep going back and forth with these YouTube videos, man. It's uh, It's been really stressful for me because you guys know I have like severe anxiety and I know I don't have to keep explaining myself. I don't want to sound like I'm making excuses, but I think it's important that you guys should know that this has been a real struggle for me. Um, I never, I never wanted to put my face out there. And it's not that I'm afraid of criticism. It's not that it's more of it. The social anxiety terrifies me to a point where I start making videos and then I start hyperventilating and, um, and it's like, I can't complete these videos and I don't know why it's not like, it's not like I don't know the knowledge or I don't know things. It's, it's hard to explain that I get. I feel suffocated. I feel like I'm choking on my own words because of this anxiety. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out ways to kind of combat that. Uh, and I, so I'm going to try it this or this upcoming week to try something new where I kind of, um, I want, I don't recommend this for others. And I probably just won't tell you what it is because <laughs> I don't want to influence people in that way, but <laughs> I'm going to try it. And then I'm going to see if that works for my stress levels I don't know, um, seeing if I can be more relaxed in front of the camera. I think I just get so fidgety and so um, just anxious about things. And I don't 
really understand why. So tonight I'm really going to reflect on where that stems from, right? The root of my issues. Like why do I get so terrified or scared of being in front of the camera or people looking at me? Like, where is it coming from? So that's kind of what I've been trying to deal with or that, I mean, that space that I've been preaching about is like really dive deep with yourself and conquer your fears and just conquer whatever it is that's emotionally bothering you. Um, and, and just, you know, I'm not a perfect human being, so I can't be like, yeah, you know, I can, I can do everything. Like I'm not, I can't do everything <laughs> and I'm, I'm okay with that. But I, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Oh, sorry for ranting about it. It feels weird, <laughs> but I'll talk to you guys next week. Um, catch me on Instagram so you can see the rest of my content and everything that I'm building artistically and where I'm headed and my progression and things. If you don't have Instagram, I do have Facebook. So you can see me on there as well if you're bored with my YouTube <laughs> or my podcast. Okay, bye.